Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a blessed time to be able to come to the house of the Lord. It is Children's Day. Let's give God praise for our children. We are excited that they will be providing leadership for us in this worship experience. But before we get started, let me, if I could, share a couple of things with you as far as this time is concerned. Good morning to all of those who are watching us online. If you're watching us on Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, or engaging in our live chat room found on our church website, welcome to St. Paul Online. Our digital ministers and social media influencers are ready to engage you this morning. So real quick, we want to invite you to share this experience with others. If you're watching us on Facebook, on uh, sharing your personal timeline, tag people that you want to invite to this post. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel and text the link of this worship service to your personal network. And if you are in the chat room on our church website, click on the invite button in your chat window to share this experience with others. Also, we would love for you to just share in your chat window where you're watching us from as far as your social media platform is concerned. We are definitely excited to have you all to join us online. I see you on the Zoom congregation. I just want to wave at you. And bless Sister Pettis, we see you online on the Zoom congregation. We thank God for your presence. Amen. We're continuing to pray for you. Again, our children are going to be leading us as far as the worship experience is concerned, and I am just excited to see them in the choir stand. Amen. Amen. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. So uh, they're going to provide uh, leadership for us, and so I'm going to ask that uh, Sister Isabella, would you come and do the call to worship? Good morning, St. Paul Baptist Church. My name is Isabella Mebin, and I am so very excited to be here to worship and praise the creator of the universe, the God who has kept us all this time and brought us all this way, presenting us faultless before the presence of our Lord and Savior. Psalm chapter 34, verse 3, King James Version says, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Now, without further ado, please join our youth choir in singing our opening hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for another day and thank you for carrying us through this week. God, we ask you that you just bless those that are heavy hearted right now, God, and just begin to move in a mighty way. Yes. God, we ask you that you just begin to have your way in this service. And God, we thank you for everything that you're going to do and how you're going to make a way. God, we thank you for your glory, your power, and we honor and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Paul Church. Hi, my name is Majesty. I'm going to be reading Matthews. Then the little children brought to him that he put his hands on them and pray, but the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus says, let the, let the children come to me for, and not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Amen.
Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Oh, I think we can do a whole lot better than that. We thank God for these precious gifts as far as our children are concerned and the leadership they provided thus far, as far as this worship experience is concerned. So thank you all for lending your voice as well as your gifts and your graces to this particular moment. Good morning, St. Paul. And good morning to those who are visiting with us. We greet you in the joyful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what a blessed opportunity it is for us to be in worship, particularly on what we call Children's Day. And so I want all the children, 12 and under, would you stand up? All of our children, 12 and under, stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's give God praise for them. Amen, amen, amen. And they will continue to provide leadership for us as far as this time is concerned. Before I come with my observations that will be um, relatively truncated, I want to ask that um, the Richardson family, if you're here, would you please stand? And I'm going to ask uh, Pat Boston to come and uh, share remarks as far as our worship experience is concerned. Come on, let's give God praise for the Richardson family. giving honor to God. Uh, it is a blessing to be here. And this is a special day as a retired teacher. I'm loving this youth and this leadership. We need more of this. So it's a blessed day. And uh, the Richardson family is here in, our, in your fair city of Charlotte. We love it. And we are so honored to be able to worship with you, uh, Reverend Scott at St. Paul Baptist Church. And I uh, wanted to thank you for inviting us and Thank you. We have a small gift that we'd like to give you also. Oh, I take gifts. Yes. <laughs> it's not enough, for, I'm sure, for what you do, but thank you so much. Oh, listen, no, we appreciate you all taking time out to be with us in worship. And uh, we hope and pray that you all will enjoy the worship experience. And St. Paul, can we show them some St. Paul love by giving them another round of applause? Thank, thank you again. You're welcome. You're welcome. And hey, if y'all feel like shouting, you can shout in this church. Y'all can tell that, can't you? Y'all, y'all got that vibe? Y'all, y'all feel at home? Hallelujah! All right, Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Also, also, it is my wonderful delight um, uh, to uh, introduce um, um, a couple of people. First of all, the uh, Jackson State. University National Alumni Association, and particularly our local chapter, the Charlotte Metro uh, chapter, uh, is worshiping with us today, and I'm going to ask that they would stand at this time. And I, I want to um, I, I want to do something that I that I normally don't do. I'm going to ask. Because uh, it's my alma mater, before anybody say anything. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want um, the Metro president just come to say hello, and then I want to have greetings from uh, the institution, uh, Yolanda Owens, and then uh, the national president, uh, Dr. Norwood, and I'm going to ask that they would come and share at this time. Greetings uh, from the JSU NAA Metro Charlotte chapter. Um, we're right here in, um, in Charlotte. My name is Laura Lewis, and I am uh, greeting you just to say thank you so much, uh, Pastor Scott and Mrs. Scott, for allowing us to uh, fellowship uh, this morning at St. Paul Baptist Church. Uh, I am so glad to see everyone. We had a great time here in Charlotte this weekend. They came from Atlanta, from Mississippi, uh, all parts of South Carolina and North Carolina. So just uh, had a wonderful time in the city of Charlotte. So thank you all, St. Paul, for allowing us to come and fellowship with you this morning. Thank you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. 
what a joy it is to stand before my friend, my former Student Government Association president, the one who I remember from Jackson State University as Robert. I am Yolanda Owens, Assistant Vice President for Institutional Advancement at Jackson State University, and I have with me Mr. David Howard, who is the Alumni Director at the University. It is my distinct honor to bring you greetings on behalf of the President, Mr. Thomas K. Hudson, 12th President of Jackson State University, Mississippi's Urban University home of the sonic boom of the South. That's right, that's right. <laughs> the 2021 SWAC football champions. That's right, that's right. The place right. where we are not just in the business of education, but we are in the business of challenging minds and changing lives. Jeremiah 29 and 11 states, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I'm here to tell you that the future of Jackson State University is indeed bright. We are poised to have a significant increase in our enrollment. Yes, our athletics have reached prime time, and, I, <laughs> and our president is creating powerful partnerships across the nation to equip our students to become uh, competitive in every field of study. And that is what brings us to the Queen City this weekend for JSU Weekend in Charlotte. We are so grateful for the work that's happening here in the Metro Charlotte area on behalf of our Darrell College home. We are grateful that we have people committed to Jackson State right here in Charlotte. You help us to reach the students and the potential college students who are in the Charlotte area. We're in a time where the cost of higher education is increasing, state budgets are steadily decreasing, but it is the work of of the Charlotte chapter and chapters like yours that help fill in the gap for these students. We're also at a time where people are trying to minimize the relevance of HBCUs across the country, but because of the work that you do here, we continue to rise. So St. Paul, we thank you for being a light in your community. We thank you for the support that you give to HBCUs. We thank you for all that you do for the cause of higher education. First Lady Pierre, Cheris, Cheris. Mm -hmm. thank you so much for your warm hospitality this morning and to the great congregation of St. Paul, we appreciate all that you do in support of our dear old college home, Jackson State University. The I love. <laughs> Well, Dr. Martin Luther King said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensely and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Good morning, my name is Alexia Norwood and I'm grateful to serve as the 19th Jackson State University National Alumni President here in this great queen city of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm grateful to be here with you for a few reasons. Number one is because your pastor comes from the same area where my family grew up. My family grew up in Silver Creek, Mississippi, and Pastor Scott is from Monticello, Mississippi. So, you know, all good things come out of Mississippi. I didn't know if you guys knew that. That's why you have so many Mississippi transplants here in Charlotte. So I'm grateful to be here today with my family, my family from Mississippi and from Charleston, my cousin Pierre Wilson and his wife uh, Onika, Onika, will you two stand? I'm grateful that they are here with me, living here in Charlotte. Our regional vice president is here for the Southeast region, Mr. Ken Archer. And you heard from our president of this chapter, Ms. Um, uh, Laura, President Laura, Laura Lewis. And uh, our AVP Owens introduced Mr. David Howard, who is the executive director of the National Alumni Association. And then we have true blue tigers and baby tigers in training. Will you all please stand from the Charlotte area? We take them all ages, all stages, so just sign them up and we'll give them a scholarship. <laughs> so, 
So one thing I just want to mention, HBCUs, roughly 107, make up only 2% of all of the colleges in the United States. We've got over 5,300 colleges, and HBCUs make up only about 2% of those colleges, 2%. But I need you all to know that although we only make up two HBCUs, about 2%, we account, HBCUs account for 75% of all of the PhDs, 46% of all businesses and executives, 50% of all black engineers, 80% of black federal judges, 85% of all black doctors, I'm one of those, 50% um, of black attorneys, 75% of those black military officers, and we started in 1877 at Jackson State University as an institution called Natchez Seminary to create black ministers like those that this church has the, be the best pastor possible to represent Jackson State University. That's who we are. That's who we are. So Pastor Scott, we have a presentation we want to make to you and this congregation this morning. So I'm going to ask all of our JSU family to come up. So we never want to leave uh, a great place where God has brought us to have an opportunity to fellowship. So we are going to make a donation today, Pastor Scott, on the behalf of Jackson State University National Alumni Association Amen. of a thousand dollars to the ministry today. Amen. Amen. And as you pay your tithes back to Jackson State University, you got ten thousand dollars out of me, Dr. <laughs> Norwood. Your pastor is one of our honorary chairs for our March to One Million, and he gave over ten thousand dollars to make sure our kids had a good education. So I appreciate your pastor. So we we want to bless the ministry today with a thousand dollars, and at your discretion to use as you see fit for this ministry. And we want to thank you, St. Paul, for loving our our GSU alum and being a blessing to the fellowship. And the Holy Ghost is going to move mightily today in ministry. Thank Amen. you. Um, so we're going to put that in the scholarship. Uh, since it's coming from uh, JSU, we're going to put it in scholarship to give support to our children that are going to college. So Amen. thank you so very much, Madam Amen. President. Thank, thank you. you so very much. Amen. It's been a wonderful day. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for, for your sharing, and, and thank you, St. Paul, for uh, allowing us to indulge in this moment. I want to just uh, drop a couple of um, things before we move on as far as worship is concerned. Um, there will be a virtual village talking listening session dealing with COVID on June the 25th at 10 o'clock. Uh, it's going to last for an hour. Five people will ask to be in that focus group. On June the 26th, um, 2022, that will be our annual graduation Sunday worship service. Our guest preacher will be the Reverend Dr. Kevin Muriel, who is the pastor of the Cascade United Methodist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And registration is now open for all of our graduates, high school, trade school, community college, undergraduate, master's, doctoral degrees, and even law degree graduates. Register online today. Today, uh, the deadline has been extended to June the 19th. So you have until June the 19th to register so that we can acknowledge you uh, as far as graduation Sunday is concerned. Uh, also, I just want to mention um, I am so appreciative for those that know that I am running for state president of our General Baptist State Convention. So I have been crisscrossing um, uh, the state of North Carolina. I think I've been in about three or four cities in the last two weeks, from Asheville to Elizabeth City uh, to Winston-Salem, uh, all across the land, uh, trying to gin up support as far as uh, my campaign is concerned. And uh, persons have asked how can they help. Um, I would just mention that gas is high. And um, uh, uh, any support uh, you want to give, uh, along with prayer, is greatly ap uh, appreciated. And um, uh, if you want to give uh, to the campaign, you can make a check 
payable to commit to elect, committed to elect Robert C. Scott, and you can give it to me and I'll make sure our treasurer will get it. If you have the capacity to use Zelle, uh, Z-E-L-L-E, Zelle, you can use the email address donations, D-O-N-A-T-I-O-N-S, at rcscott2022.org, or you can go through PayPal and search for elect RC Scott 2022 and share as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, anything that you all uh, decide to do would be greatly appreciated. Let me also just state that um, as we engage in this worship experience, COVID is still real. And um, I'm appreciative for all of you who are following the directions of our ushers. They are my extension uh, into the congregation to keep you safe and secure. And so uh, our protocol for those that are visiting here at St. Paul, we continue to wear our mask and we try to uh, practice some form of social distance, but definitely we're wearing our mask because the numbers are going up and we want to keep you as safe and as secure as possible. I do want to say that if you don't feel well, if you don't feel well, please stay home. Amen. One more time for Jesus. If you don't feel well, please stay home. One more time for the Holy Ghost. If you don't feel well, please stay home. We would rather for you to stay home, check us out online, and be safe and secure as far as that's concerned. As we prepare to um, go to the Lord in prayer, we ask that you will keep uh, the family of Deacon Nate Chambers um, in prayer as they prepare to funeralize his brother today. Uh, the services will be held at Richmond Funeral Home in Charlotte. Visitation will be at noon, and the services will begin at 1. Also, on tomorrow, the family of Sister Margaret Alexander, the mother of Deacon Alfred Alexander, will be held at the Old Friendship Baptist Church in Charlotte on Betis Ford. The organizational rites ceremony will take place at 10 o'clock. Visitation will be held at 11, and the services will be at noon. So we want to keep uh, Deacon Alfred and his wife, uh, Deacon Helen, uh, lifted up in our prayers. We also want to continue to lift up the family of uh, Kristen Nance, who is the cousin of disciple Jody Nance. And we ask that you all will keep the family of Sister Lois Clyburn, um, mother of disciple Marcia Clyburn Love, lifted up in prayer. Memorial service was held yesterday at the Greater Galilee Baptist Church. And the family of disciple Ernestine Johnson, we want to keep uh, that family lifted up as they funeralized her uh, last week. We know that God can do anything but fail, and God hears our prayers. We want to lift up Deacon uh, Arvette Pearson, who had surgery. Uh, we continue to lift up Yvonne Pettis, uh, Deacon Tina Ross, um, Yvonne Smith, Alan Thomas, Crystal Truesdale, James Young, Patricia Young, and of course, our pastor emeritus, uh, Reverend Dr. Paul Drummond and his wife, Lady Thomasina. Um, we know that God not only uh, hear our prayers, but God will respond in God's sovereign way. So, um, Calvin, are you taking us? You doing the prayer? All right. I'm going to ask that you will come at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for another opportunity to come to your house of worship. Lord, we are thankful that you've allowed us to complete another year of school. Thank you for keeping students and teachers safe. Lord, we are we realize that there were some who did, were not able to end the school year. We lift up those families who are still grieving the loss of their loved ones. We remember our sick and shut in. We know you have all power in your hands and ask that you would touch them in a way that would improve their condition. Lord, we pray for our church so that we may continue to grow in our Christian walk. Help us to worship better, praise more, love and forgive one another. We ask that you would continue to guide our pastor so he may lead us into a better understanding of you. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. 
you pray better than your daddy who I'm training to be a deacon. Amen. Come on, let's give Calvin another round of applause. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. And what a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to partner with our God as far as our gifts are concerned and as we prepare to give unto the Lord. We are asking that you will give consideration to giving one of several ways. The first way that you can give is by either mailing a check or money order to the church at 1401 Allen Street, Charlotte 28205. Or you could drop off your cash check or money order here at the church. Uh, but if you decide to do that, call the church first to make sure that someone is here to receive that offering uh, at 704-334-5309. Um, the other way you can give is through our website, through either ACS or Church Life. And then the final way that you can give is through Givelify. And if you don't have that app on your smart device, download that app to your smart device. Uh, search for St. Paul Baptist Church, connect it to your favorite credit card, and in three clicks, you can give. If you have a physical offering in the church this morning, uh, there is uh, a couple of baskets on the rows in front of you, and at the appropriate time, you can place your offering in that basket, um, and our account team will receive it. Amen? So, however you're giving, if you're giving um, electronically or if you're giving uh, a physical offering, if you would, take your offering, place it in your right hand. We want to give God what's right, not what's left. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. realize that as we give our tithes and offerings that there is a for those that are practicing unto your word God for those who may not necessarily be given tithes or offerings but given something Lord would you continue to stretch and enhance their faith and then God even for those who feel like they don't have to give anything as we used to say back in Mississippi turpentine their mind until they understand that they can't beat you giving no matter how hard they try. Lord, would you take these gifts of ours, of ours and multiply them in a god way so that your word, your work, your witness, and your worship shall go forth from this place and you shall be magnified, edified, and glorified. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do me a favor. If you have a, a fiscal offering, just place it in the basket in front of you and our account team will receive it.
Come on, let's give them another round of applause. It is very refreshing to see our children um, back in worship with us. And can you help me to celebrate Sister Sherelle Fuller? For those that don't know, she uh, has moved to High Point. So she came all the way from High Point to be with us today. And um, I, I am definitely excited that she was able to provide music for our children um, for this moment. And you all have done a tremendous job. both in leading worship and in singing. And so thank you all so very, uh, very much. Um, I want to, if I could, call your attention for the time that is mine um, to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And I want to look at verses 1 through Five, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And uh, I'll be reading from the uh, New King James Version of Scripture. And you can follow me along with whatever translation that you have. It reads like this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character and character hope, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, if you didn't quite get that, let me, if I could, share with you from the message translation how Eugene Peterson puts it. By entering through faith into what God has always wanted for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him, we have it all together with God because of our Lord Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hope we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know that trouble can develop passionate patience in us and how patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we are never left feeling short change. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours out on our lives through the Holy Spirit. I want to preach for the time that, my, that is mine. I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. Amen. I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. There, there's a story about uh, the former mayor of New York City, uh, LaGuardia, whom the famous airport is named after. He served the city of New York during the time of the Great Depression and throughout World War II. He was an interesting character who used to ride the fire trucks through the city, get in police cars. He would round up the orphans and take them to Yankee baseball games and even read funny to the kids when the newspapers went on strike. One bitter cold night in 1935, Mayor LaGuardia went to night court in the poorest district of the city. 
LaGuardia dismissed the judge for the evening and decided to take over the bench himself. Within a few minutes, a tattered old woman was brought before him. She was charged with stealing a loaf of bread. She told the mayor that her daughter's husband left the family. Her daughter had been gravely ill and the two grandchildren were starving. But the shopkeeper whom the bread was stolen from refused to drop the charges. He said, it's a real bad neighborhood, your honor. She's got to be punished to teach other folks a lesson. That's what the shopkeeper said. So Mayor LaGuardia sighed. He turned to the woman and said, you know, I got to punish you. The law says there's no exception. I got to punish you. And it's either a $10 fine or 10 days in jail. And even as he was pronouncing this sentence on the woman, the mayor reached down into his pocket and pulled out a $10 bill. He said, here is the $10 fine, which I now remit. And furthermore, I'm fining everybody in the room 50 cents for living in a town where a person has to steal bread to feed her grandchildren. <laughs> Mayor LaGuardia that night wound up collecting $47.50 in the courtroom and gave the money to the woman. He even collected 50 cents from the man who brought the charges to the woman. The lady was guilty, but her fine was paid by LaGuardia. And plus, she walked away with almost $50 that she didn't have. And back during that time, $50 went a long way. She got something she did not deserve. I want to suggest this morning, St. Paul and friends, that all of us fall in that same category. And this is the scenario that Paul presents to us at this particular time, where all of us have experienced separation and alienation from God. Because we are naughty by nature and sinners by birth, we have no right to blessings and benefits and the care of God. As a matter of fact, the wrath of God which emanates from God's righteousness means that you and I should not have the blessings we have, the life we have, or even the health we have. But how many of y'all know that God continues to give us chance after chance after chance? <laughs> Therefore, Paul is reminding them and reminding us that the very thing that separates us from God does not nullify the love of God for us, Paul informs us that we are justified by faith, which makes us right with God. However, in 2022, in this postmodern era, it is hard for people to appreciate a relationship with God because there are those who have issues and questions and even doubt about the existence of God. The problem is very real in today's culture. Does God exist? Or does it really matter if I believe that God exists? Or does it really matter if I come to church or not? Does it really matter if I confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I want to suggest that these questions emerge because we live in a time where people do not believe in truth. Or they want to create their own set of rules and regulations. Or they want to live their own truth. And I discovered that when you live your own truth, you could get in trouble because your truth is relative. Truth for the Christian is not a proposition, but a person. Somebody go catch that on the way home. Because Jesus says, I am the way the truth and the life. The problem in our culture today is that we want to create our own supposition of what truth is. So we are living now in a time where society don't even believe in the concept of sin. The values of faith doesn't mean as much in these times because people don't fear God. 
they have no respect for the church. They could care less for authority. And God knows they ain't crazy about Christians. Therefore, preaching and teaching about Jesus is a hard thing because nobody takes Jesus at face value anymore. Therefore, it's kind of hard to talk about being justified by faith if I don't even believe you got to have faith. If faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, then for many in this postmodern age, this is hard to swallow. This is because we question everything and we got to have proof for everything. In other words, this is where a lot of folks fall in today's culture. What's in it for me? How does this benefit me personally, economically, professionally? Because if I can't see any benefit anytime soon, I don't want to go through it. However, I've lived long enough to discover that life has a tendency to teach that you can't always get your way. Life will show you that you're not the cat's meow that you're not the center of the universe. And I have discovered that living on this side of the Jordan can steal your sense of peace, joy, and happiness if you're not anchored in Jesus Christ. There has to be something, my brothers and sisters, that empower us, strengthen us, remind us that we are never alone nor forsaken. And when you and I have an authentic relationship with God by confessing our faith in Jesus Christ, we know that we are never alone. Here's what I want to drop on you. If you don't get anything else, get this. That your relationship with God cannot be based upon your feelings or emotions. It has to be predicated upon your faith. Now, faith is not some blind trust. Faith is a trust with your eyes wide open that allows for you to ask questions, make inquiry, but it will change your life. When you have this kind of faith, you will experience the abundant life that Jesus talks about and have a different perspective on your reality. In other words, when you have this kind of faith, you don't live by what you see, but you make decisions by what you don't see, but what but you've been told by God. Your destiny, my destiny, our destiny is shaped by a heavenly agenda that has already said we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. Now, I know I know Paul repeats the words of the prophet Habakkuk when he says that the just shall live by faith. However, there are those who can testify how living by faith ain't as easy as it seems. Yet, if we're going to walk with a God that we cannot see, trust a God we cannot see, believe in a God we cannot see, you better do it by faith. Living by faith is not easy at all, but if you live by faith, you have peace, joy, and happiness in God. I have to admit, the only way I've gotten to where I am right now is because I had to believe in a God I could not see, yet trust that same God to bring me through whatever I was going through that I could see. And let me give this to you for free. I ain't talking about a God having faith in God to pay your bills because that's easy. I'm talking about having a faith in God to keep your sanity when your life is going to hell in a handbasket. I, I'm talking about a faith that will strengthen you when you want to give up. 
I'm talking about a faith that tells you to press on when you want to throw in the towel. I'm talking about a faith that makes you get up out of your bed when you want to stay down there in depression. I'm talking about a faith that keeps you going when you want to give up. I'm talking about a faith that'll make you stand when the devil tries to knock you down to the ground. Is there anybody in the house that knows about the faith I'm talking about? In in, in, in other words, in other words, if we have faith, if we believe in God, then we're made right with God. The word peace in the text that I shared before you does not mean just inner calmness or tranquility. But rather it speaks to, watch this, a new viable transformative relationship with God when you and I were separated from God. In other words, the God, watch this, who had the right not to have anything to do with us, lets us be in relationship with God because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I got to admit, I can't survive and wouldn't be all that I need to be if I did not have God in my life. That if I did not have a sense of the creator, being my father and the designer of my destiny. You and I, and I know I'm getting ready to mess up somebody with this, you and I need God more than God needs us. Oh, see, some of you all can't shout because you're under the erroneous assumption that the Lord needs you. And I'm here to let you know the Lord don't need none of us in here. God was doing quite fine before he made any of us. As a matter of fact, we're the biggest reason for the heartbreak that God has right now. God was doing fine before you got here. God going to be fine when you leave here. Understand that God does not need you and I. You and I need the Lord. Woo, I feel like preaching don't push me too fast. Uh, 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 when, 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 when God blesses us beyond measure, God is giving us something we don't deserve. <sighs> you know, church folks, I, I tell you, sometimes y'all, y'all really make me want to just pray. Because what I just shared with you, at least 12 of y'all should have said amen to that. Let me try that one more time. When God blesses us beyond measure. All right. Rewind, remix, replay. <laughs> Let me get country and guttural for you. If you just reflect on how ratchet, crazy, trifling, tricky, demeaning you have been in your past and yet you got some of the stuff that you got right now and you know you don't deserve it I'm here to let you know honey child and brother man it ain't nobody but God and when you think about Jesus and all that he's done for you if you can't give God any praise or glory there's something wrong with your salvation Let me, let me, can I put down the accelerator real fast? Paul informs us, watch this, that where faith is, love is. Where love is, hope is. You can't have faith in God and not be exposed to the love of God. And you can't have faith in God and not have hope that a better day is coming. Out of faith and hope and love, we are told in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, that the greatest of these is love. Faith and hope comes from us, but love comes from God. Which means, beloved, that when faith runs out, love is still there. <laughs> and that when hope runs out, love is still there. God's love ain't sustained by my faith. It's there despite the times I lack faith. There have been some times when I didn't think God could come through or God would come through, but even though I didn't think God could come through or God would come through, God came through. 
Watch this. Even when you and I mess up royally to the point of shame and disgrace, the love of God reminds us, hey, get back up and try it again. So when I look at this text, I conclude that there's some things I don't deserve, but I'm going to take it anyway. And what is offered to us that we don't deserve? I want to suggest, as I move through this text real quick, that there are a few things that are offered to us that we don't deserve. The first one is, we are offered freedom from the guilt of our sins. Again, one day we're going to learn how to shout on doctrine. We, we are offered freedom from the guilt of our sin. That, that's, that's in verse 1. That's in verse 1. Uh, and I want to unpack this for us very methodically because Paul says in verse 1 we are justified by faith uh-huh uh -huh, yeah yeah justified by faith and that term justified is a legal term because it's dealing with issues of right and wrong it's dealing with issues of fairness and equality God pardons all the sins of those who believe in Jesus Christ. God accounts, accepts, and treats them as righteous in the eye of the law. So my faith in Jesus Christ makes me right with God even though I've messed up and fallen short of the glory of God. So, 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 so justification is the first phase of me experiencing salvation, which allows for me to be acquitted before the court of heaven. All right, all right. Here's what I just said. Justification does not mean there's no penalty for your sin. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Oh, right, y'all know y'all Bible. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now, <laughs> you and I are sinners saved by grace. Now, I know you don't like to be called a sinner because uh, you really think that you popped out of the womb, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, but the devil is a lie. <sighs> Every last one of us in here was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Every last one of us in here could not make ourselves right with God because the standard for God's righteousness is too high. God is too holy. God is too pure. God is too sovereign. God is too majestic. God is too righteous. As a matter of fact, our righteousness, y'all, is like filthy rags in the sight of God. But here's the kicker and the shout. If you put your trust in Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, that God declares you to be innocent of all the charges that's brought against you, even though you're guilty of the stuff that's brought against you. Yeah. It, 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 it is this very act of faith that prompts God to look at our rap sheet, shake God's head in sadness, look at us, then look at Jesus standing beside us and say, you know what? Yep, you're guilty as charged, but I'm declaring you innocent, not because of anything you have done, but because of the one who's standing beside you, because God knows we don't deserve what we get. <clears throat> we are sinners and the penalty for sin is death sin is shameful sin is disgraceful sin is despicable we have sins of omission that means we do something we ain't got no business doing we have sins uh, sins of omission which means that we don't do what we're supposed to do and sins of commission which means that we do something we have no business doing and whenever we commit sin it makes god shake god's head in disgust However, hear me and hear me well, when you are in Christ, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are justified 
before God. Let me see if I can explain it this way. We know we're guilty before the court of eternity. And God the Father is the sitting judge. The devil is our prosecuting attorney. And the devil has empirical evidence for our wrongdoing. As a matter of fact, the devil prompted some of us in the wrongdoing. The devil set us up in our mess and then reminded us of our mess to bring it before God. And the prosecuting attorney, Satan, brings into the court of eternity the live stream of our existence. He brings in all your social media stuff. He plays it before the court and the judge cringes at what the judge sees. The evidence is irrefutable. All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. Evidence is clear. Nobody's right. The penalty is certain. The wages of sin is death. However, <coughs> our defense attorney, Jesus Christ, stands up. He approaches the bench and talks to the judge. As a matter of fact, the judge and the defense attorney look so much alike, you can't tell one from the other. <coughs> the defense attorney reminds the judge, we are guilty as charged. We've done everything the devil has accused us of. However, because of our relationship with the attorney, Jesus asks for the charges to be dismissed because he's already taken care of the charges. Our defense attorney states that because of him, we are justified by faith. And therefore, we were sinners, but our sins were charged to our defense attorney. And this is why. Can I tell you why you and I ought to be shouting right now? Because nobody in heaven or hell or on earth can charge us, count us, or doom us to be a failure, a detriment, a shame, a sinner, an embarrassment, hope Helpless, helpless, defeated, lost, unusable, unworthy, or of no value. God has justified God's children. No matter how hard you got to struggle, no matter how hard you got to suffer, no matter how much hell you got to go through, we serve a God that sooner or later will deliver us, pick us up, turn us around, plant us on solid ground. Do I have anybody in here that ain't afraid to give God praise because God ain't going around reminding you about all the mess you've done in your past so somebody else gonna get up and shout in just a moment so regardless of what the devil tries to do your trial is already rigged because of your relationship with Jesus Christ and so somebody need to give God praise because you are justified by faith messed up justified falling short justified disappointed God justified kids out of wedlock justified jacked up your marriage justified have an addiction justified had a relapse justified if you've been molested you're still justified lied and cheated justified haven't been perfect justified not the best spouse justified not the best child justified not been faithful justified haven't been so forgiving justified haven't been Passionate, justified. Haven't been merciful, justified. I don't deserve it, but I'll take it because I know that he gives me more than I deserve. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Whatever the devil tries to throw at you, Tell him he can take it where the summers are perpetual and the cool winds never blow. But there's something else that this text teaches, and that is that I also have, check this out, the favor of the Father. That's in verse 2. That's in verse 2 where he says, through whom we have access to faith and to this grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Which means I don't deserve it, 
but God gives it to me anyhow. You know, that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a, a what? <laughs> uh, watch this. Not only has Jesus justified us and reconciled us back to God, but he has given us personal access to God, which means you ain't got to go nobody to get to God for you. Do you all realize that you have direct access to God? That you can go... Now, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, St. Paul. Some stuff need to be left between you and God. And you have direct access to God. Now, I don't mind praying for you. I know my ministers don't mind praying for you. I know my deacons don't mind praying for you. But when you can't get in touch with your pastor, when you can't get in touch with a deacon, when you can't get in touch with your family and friends, you can still fall down on your knees and say, Father, oh, I feel my Mississippi slipping out. I stretch my hands to thee. No other help. Hey, uh, when, when, see, here's the problem. Here's the problem with us church folks. Because the moment I mention favor, our minds go to things. Ooh, and I'm getting a new car. New house, new clothes. Ooh, the favor of the Lord for me. And, 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 and I, I discovered you can have all of that stuff and still not have God's favor. Preach Robert Charles Scott. Um, um, Here's what real favor is. Real favor means I can come. Ooh, thank you, God, for this revelation. I can come into the presence of God with my messed up self and God not take me out. I declare one day y'all gonna learn how to shout on good doctrine because before Jesus came, anybody that came into the very presence of God and had not consecrated themselves in the proper way, God would strike them down. But now because I have Jesus in my life, that even when I go through mess and I fall short, I can come to God directly. I ain't got to talk to no man, no woman, no boy, no girl. I ain't got to talk to no pastor, no preacher, no priest, no pope, no bishop. I can go to God for myself and tell God all about my trouble. Ah. Uh, now one thing we got to understand is that you and I, we're saved not because of what we do, but because of what Jesus has done. That's, that's what grace is. You and I can't get saved by the works we do by the education we acquire, by how much money we got in our bank account, by what kind of car we drive, what kind of neighborhood we live in. I thank God for that, because if that was the case, some of us would be more saved than others. I can't get saved or have a relationship with God based upon my goodness, because I've discovered my goodness ain't good enough, and I don't have enough brownie points stored up to get in favor with God. My righteousness is like a filthy rag in God's eyesight. Therefore, my salvation and my relationship with God is solely based upon the grace of God, and grace in this sense is the attitude on God's part that proceeds entirely from within the heart and the mind of God that is conditioned in no way by anything except me being the object of God's favor. In other words, God offers us salvation not based upon anything that we have done but simply based upon who God is. And that's why we can sing that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Now, can I go deep with y'all just for a moment? Because when I have a relationship with the Father because of the grace I receive through the Son, I am placed in covenant relationship with God. If I'm in covenant relationship with God, then I'm exposed to the same blessings of both Abraham and
in Jesus. The blessings of Abraham means that I can have material blessings to function in this reality. The blessings of Jesus means that I got the spiritual power and fortitude to deal with the enemy who's trying to jack me up. That's what it means to be a joint heir with Jesus. That the very thing that Jesus got access to, you and I got access to. Somebody getting ready to run out of their shoes right now, which means that if you are saved, then you have favor. And if you have accepted Jesus, then you have favor. And if you got God in your life, then you have favor. And if you got favor, you ain't got to walk around with your head bowed down like a puppy dog with your tail between your head. Lift up your heads, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Y'all talking about when the praises go up, the blessings come down. I don't need that when the praises go up for me. I want the blesser in my life. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and wrap this thing up. Um, y'all got to excuse me. I ain't came out of my... Uh, uh, can I give you one more thing and I promise I'll be done? Uh, I've discovered that when God gives me something that I don't deserve, I'm going to take it. Because this is what God does. God will take some of the worst mess in our lives and make it the greatest source of our blessing. Um, here he is. Here is the greatest paradox of being a follower of Jesus. That when you follow Jesus, it doesn't mean you will never suffer. As a matter of fact, thank you. Help me preach this thing. Uh, how many of you all... I need some honest folks in the place right now. How many of y'all knew that life seemed like it was okay before you got real with God? Mm hmm Yep. Yep. I figured as much. See, 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 I need, I need some real folks. They ain't afraid to testify. Go like, Pastor, I was doing fine until I, I, I got real with God. And when I got real with God, it seemed like everything came at me, including the kitchen sink. And the problem with some of these prosperity pimp preachers is that they want to tell you, you don't ever have to suffer. How many of y'all know that's a lie from the pit of hell? Life just has built into the equation suffering. And sooner or later, trouble is going to come and pay you a visit. But what I've discovered about the God I serve and worship is that God has the capacity to use suffering as a strengthening mechanism in our lives. Now, this is something we don't deserve because guess what? Some stuff we brought on ourselves. Uh-oh, it's getting ready to get real quiet in here. Some, some stuff, it ain't the devil doing it. Hello, is this my call? Some stuff we brought on ourselves because of the stupid, idiotic choices that we made. All right, see, y'all don't want to be real. Had you not made some of the choices that you made, you wouldn't be in the hell that you're in right now. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. But since you are where you are, if you put your trust in God, God will even take your crazy stuff that you made the choice and use it and work it for your good to teach you a lesson so that when the Lord brings you out of this, you can do like some others have said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll never, ever, never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever go back through that again. Woo! Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. There's some troubles in our lives that ain't got nothing to do with the work for the kingdom, but it's based upon our own sins and shortcomings. However, because you and I are connected to God through Jesus Christ, the enemy wants to discredit your work, your witness, your worship, and your word. But the God we serve through God's omnipotence and sovereignty and righteousness can take our trials and our troubles and flip that thing to bless us anyhow. Ah, now here's the crazy thing because we know if we're honest, trouble stifles our hope. 
Trouble take our joy. Trouble messes with our faith. Trouble increases our doubt. Trouble disturbs our peace. And if we could do with our life what we want, we would exclude all kinds of suffering and shame and headaches and heartaches and sickness and trials and tribulation because we don't like pain. I ain't, I'm be honest. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through anything, but I have discovered it is within the crucible of suffering that God is doing some stuff in my life that would not take place in any other ordinary way. And y'all, Paul says you ought to rejoice in suffering and rejoice in pain and rejoice in trouble. Paul, what have you been smoking? What have you been drinking? What you mean rejoice? Paul said, man, I ain't tell you to rejoice because of suffering. I am saying while you're in the suffering, you ought to have joy. While you're going through the pain, you still ought to have joy. While you're in the trouble, you ought to have joy. Now, can I just be real with y'all? Because this is antithetical. This is unnatural to my flesh to have joy when I'm suffering. However, we are rejoiced in our suffering, not because we like the pain, but God is using the pain to build our character. Y'all, this is crazy, but this is how a follower of Jesus Christ is developed because our problems develop perseverance, which is endurance, which in turn strengthens our character, which in turn deepens our trust in God, which in turn gives us the ability to face the future with greater confidence. In other words, you can't judge your troubles by the outward appearance and its internal afflictions on your life. You can't let your mess take you out because God, even in the midst of the hell you're going through, is doing something to make you better and to make you stronger and to make you wiser and to make you more productive for the sake of the kingdom. Oh, I feel something pushing me right now. Therefore, the reason some people are so mean and bitter and unproductive and nasty and spiritual is because they have not found that place to give God joy in the midst of their troubles. They've allowed for their troubles to define who they are. They have allowed for their troubles to define their future. You have to let your suffering make you feel defeated and obsolete. And that's why you can't get up from your bed of affliction and get up from your pain and get up from your problems and get up from your trials and get up from your tribulation. That's why you let the devil inhibit your praise and your worship. You let your mess you're going through right now make you feel defeated and hopeless. But oh! If you are connected to God through Jesus Christ, I wish I had about three or four folks that would flow with me. Don't you know that God has the power to take your mess and turn it into a miracle? God has the power to take your grime and give you grace. Y'all got to excuse me. My Mississippi done slipped out. God has the capacity to take your hell and let you holler hallelujah. And so because of what God is doing in my life. Uh, I've learned to trust in Jesus uh, and I have learned to trust in God. Uh, good morning, St. Paul. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but do I have anybody uh, that ain't ashamed to give God praise uh, because you find yourself in a tough situation, but you've learned how to have joy uh, in spite of your trials. Uh, you've learned how to have joy uh, in spite of your tribulations. You've learned how to have joy uh, in spite of your suffering uh, because you have discovered uh, this joy that I have. Uh, the world didn't give it uh, and the world can't take it away. Uh, good morning, y'all. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but I need somebody uh, that ain't afraid to give God praise uh, in the midst of your pain, uh, in the midst of your problems, uh, in the midst of your situation uh, because the God we serve uh, is more more than able uh, to lift up a bow down head. I'll see y'all later. But won't the Lord make a way out of nowhere? Won't God lift up a bow down head? Won't God put joy bells in your soul? Won't the Lord put common sense in your mind? Won't the Lord wipe the tears from your eyes? Now I need a few folks that ain't too ashamed nor too afraid to give God praise because this joy 
gotta have. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. So if you're not afraid, nor too scared to lift up your hands, throw back your head, open up your mouth, and give God praise in the midst of your pain, watch God turn it around. Watch God give you power. Watch God clear your mind. Watch God lift up your head. Watch God give you strength. Watch God give you mercy. Watch God give you power. Say yes. Say yes. Yes. Yes, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me. Never to leave me. Uh, never to leave me. I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. <laughs> and, and, and you know why I'll take it? Because I can't live without it. I, I want to, I, I want to, I'll go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and give him praise. Be seated if you can. I want to um, want to offer want to offer you an opportunity to have a relationship with the God of this universe by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you can have that right now. You really can. And I want to offer this to you because the only way you can make it through life in this world is when you really have God. Here's the deal. There's several ways you can do this. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask that our deacons if you all would stand to just uh, watch and care for this congregation as we do this. If you're, if you're in the house right now and you've heard this word preached you want a relationship with God, you want to be justified, you want to be made right, God is ready to accept you right now if you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you're looking for a church home, I would love to be your pastor, and these men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. So here's the deal. First of all, for salvation, I want us to do a short prayer, and I want all of us to repeat the prayer, and as we repeat the prayer, for those of us who made this confession, it's a reminder but if you're praying this prayer for the very first time and it connects with you, your head and your heart, your mind and your spirit, I'm going to ask you to make a decision for Christ. I'm going to ask you to make a decision for Christ. Because if you make one step, I promise you'll make two. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I want what I don't deserve. And that's a relationship with God through you. I've messed up. I've fallen short, and I want you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead on the third day, and I believe one day he's coming back. But until then, send your Holy Spirit 
into my life. Forgive me of all my sins and make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you mean that prayer in your head and your heart and your mind and your spirit, you mean that prayer sincerely, salvation is yours. It really is yours. It is not based upon your works. It's not based upon how often you come to church. It's not based upon what you wear, what you drive, where you live. If you're in the house right now, you prayed that prayer, you meant that prayer in your head and your heart, would you hold up your hand right now? Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. I see you. I see you. Hold up. Do me a favor. If you got your hand up, will you come down, please? Would you come down? If you got your hand, come on. Go, go ahead and move. Come on down. Come on down. If you're in the, on the lower level, I want to invite you to come down as well. Amen. Because we want you to leave this place knowing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. God bless you. 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 Oh, we could do a whole lot better than that. We could do a whole lot better than that. We could do a whole lot better than that. Come on, St. Paul. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we got one coming from the balcony. Come on, let's give God praise. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? Will there be another? Hey, listen. If you're watching us on Facebook or on the website and that prayer was meant for you, would you type in salvation in the chat box? One of our digital ministers is going to reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. If you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening to us on the telephone, I want you to send us an email at connect at sbcnc.org or call the church office at 704-334-5309. Leave your name and your number name and a number where we can reach out to you and by five o'clock tomorrow uh, someone from my office is going to reach out to you let you know what the next steps are as far as this wonderful life-changing decision that you're making amen 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 here's my second call if you're here if you're in the sanctuary you're saying listen pastor i believe in jesus i know him as my lord and savior but i don't have a church home and i've been bouncing around from church to church i've been uh, bounce around from online to online. Uh, I happen to be here today and, and I would like to make St. Paul my tribe. Well, we would love for you to roll with us and do life with us and we do life with you. So if you're in the place, you don't have a church home, you don't have a pastor, I would love to be your pastor. And if that's you, would you just do me the wonderful favor and do God the pleasure. Just hold up your hand. You don't have a church home or you're searching for a church home, would you hold up your hand? Hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. Hold up. If you got your hand up, if I could be your pastor, I, I want to do that right now. I would love to be your pastor. If you got your hand up, go ahead and come on down right now. You ain't got to wait till next week, next month, next year. I want to invite you to go ahead and come on down right now. Amen. I want to invite you to come on down right now. I I, I see you there. God bless you. Come on. Yeah, you come down the middle aisle. You come down the middle aisle. Amen. Amen. You come. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. You're the next contestant on Jesus Loves You. Yes, he does. Amen. Will there be another one? 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 If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a pastor, I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. Will there be another? Guess what? We don't deserve it, but we ought to take it. Amen. Will there be another one? Will there be another? 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 I don't want this opportunity to pass you by. We want you to know that you can have a family here in Charlotte. If you're joining us online, I want you to do me this favor. If you're joining us online, if you would, just type in connect on Facebook, on the St. Paul website, when our digital ministers will reach out to you. Or if you're watching us on YouTube or telephone, call the church office, 704-334-5309. Leave your name and your number, or you can email us at connect at spbcnc.org, and we will reach out to you by five o'clock tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, uh, let's give God praise for these three that have come. 
and because of, of, of because of, of the pandemic, I would normally come and give you a hug or shake your hand, but I'm gonna come just come do fist bump, all right? And I want you all to follow uh, our team. They're gonna help you to understand this wonderful decision that you made. So God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I want you to follow them. Let's give God praise. St. Paul, we could do give God praise. Amen. We could do a whole lot better than that. Amen. Don't ever take for granted that anybody got to join your church. All right. Listen, we're getting ready to leave, but before we do that, uh, Peyton, is Peyton here? Hey, Peyton. All right. Um, I'm, I've asked Peyton to come. Uh, he wants to share with our congregation um, uh, some things. And I want him to come at this particular time. Uh, let's give God praise for him. It's good to see him. job. Great job today, Dr. Sherelle. Y'all did wonderful. Thanks for letting God use you today. I really appreciated hearing that. That was wonderful. It was beautiful. Uh, good afternoon, um, everybody, and uh, greetings to, uh, to everyone, to my St. Paul family, uh, my brothers and sisters here. Uh, Pastor Scott has given me the time this morning uh, to come and speak before you all and um, I'm thankful for it. So I wanted to thank you, Pastor, um, for that time. Uh, Taylor and I stand before you all today um, to share some, um, some tough news. Um, I come before you today to say um, with great sadness in my heart uh, that I have stepped down um, as a youth pastor, um, effective at the end of May, and official um, with the announcement being today. I understand that this news may come as a shock and a surprise um, to many of you this morning. Um, and I want to apologize. I am. I'm very I'm incredibly sorry for um, any pain or grief that you might feel in this shock. Um, please understand and believe me when I say this, that this is, has been um, and was uh, the toughest decision that um, I have ever had to make in my life. Um, the main reason being behind my resignation is that my mental health has um, not been good um, recently. It's taken a hard hit and it's been a struggle um, for much of my time in this position. Um, it's extremely hard to lead and to love the people that you serve, but also to love your wife and those who love you most when you cannot properly love and lead yourself. A big part of who I am and the way that I have been since I've been here at St. Paul, I believe, is to be as authentic and vulnerable as possible with you all because that's just who God's made me to be and it's the only way I know how to be. So I wanted to let you all in on some of the darkness that has plagued me um, the last few months. Uh, you see, my mental health re reached a significant low um, at the um, a low point, um, when in, at the end of February, I made the decision to admit myself into a mental health and behavioral health facility. Um, the medicine I had taken since I was a sophomore or junior in high school um, had run its course and was no longer working like it used to. Uh, the anxiety that I had felt since I was in elementary school it gotten worse to the point that it was starting to uh, affect me where I would have anxiety attacks at work. Um, and sometimes at home. Intrusive thoughts of not being good enough, uh, not having a purpose in life or in the ministry, fear of failure um, and panicking because I did not know how to shake these thoughts in order to properly lead these kids and to feel like I was being productive at the church. They ruined my mind. The day that I checked myself into the mental health facility, I was having suicidal thoughts. Um, and feared that I would act upon them. Um, and I, 
I spent four or five days at that facility um, and uh, forever thankful to the doctors and the therapists um, that worked with me during that time, that treated me with love and compassion during that time and sent me on my way um, in order to get better. It was a scary thing um, for both me and for Taylor. So I had never done that. I would never made that decision before. After I returned, Pastor Scott gave me ample time um, for myself and for my health. Um, and for that, I cannot thank him enough. Um, family, I want you to know that our pastor, he's one of the most generous and kind people that I've ever met in my life. I know for certain not many bosses would have given their employees the time and the space to work um, these things out that I was feeling, um, to work out the mental health and to take it seriously um, enough to be able to empathize, uh, empathize with them along the way. So thank you for that, my brother. I really appreciate that. This time away allowed me to spend a lot of time in prayer, uh, to have many discussions with my therapist, and to have many long talks with Taylor, who um, I really appreciate um, for standing by me during this time to determine what I should do. During that time, I decided that my heart was split. I could continue here at the church and try to fight through what I was feeling to love and to lead the kids and possibly run myself into the ground in doing so, or I could make the difficult decision to step back, to work on myself, and to see how I could love myself better through therapy and time away in the ministry. Why? It's because ministry stretches you. It forces you to engage with the spiritual and mental messes inside of you on a daily basis in order to do the job that you've been called to do and do it well, and how could I carry on when I was struggling with that? I could feel my heart and body running from the stress and anxiety I was feeling every time I went into work or dealt with work things, the perfectionist attitude I had set for myself and the absurdly high expectations I set we're going unmet. All of this has led me to be with you and sharing this news today. My heart breaks when I think of leaving this place, when I think of leaving St. Paul. You see, I planned on staying here for several more years. I did, you can ask Taylor, we had it, we had it in the cards. And I can definitely say I didn't plan on leaving like this. Yet if there's one thing that I've learned since being at St. Paul, um, I've learned it especially through the way that we pray here, it's that in good times and bad, we can always give thanks to God. With that, yeah. With that, I'd like to thank God for the families that I have served during my time here at St. Paul. And thank you. Um, thank you for allowing me the privilege of teaching and discipling you, as well as your kids, as we have aimed to follow Jesus. Parents, thank you for letting me love on your kids and for encouraging them, and um, for encouraging them to grow spiritually, um, and, and to, for giving them the opportunities to grow through Bible studies, impact worships, and Sunday morning live classes. Without you, that's not possible. Children and youth, thank you for sharing your life with me, um, for answering my discussion questions, no matter how strange or big they might be, for listening to me teach and preach the word, and thank you for opening yourselves and your hearts up to me, telling me all about who God has made you to be. Thank you, Pastor. Um, thank you, Sister Deborah Reed, wherever you are. Thank you for being here up front to start. I do appreciate you and the board that brought me in here. I'm at St. Paul Baptist and the, for the St. Paul family. Thank you for taking a chance on a white 22-year-old from Fredericksburg, Virginia <laughs> to be your next youth pastor. I truly hope that you've learned as much from me as I have from you. You see, during my time at St. Paul, I've been reminded of what true Christian generosity looks like. Again, it's modeled by our pastor who got me more suits, so I'm leaving with more than the tattered um, Heather Gray one that I came in with. <laughs> it was so bad, I think people were starting to wonder why the youth pastor was wearing the same suit every Sunday, so I did appreciate that. I, and also, this generosity is carried out even more by you. You see, you showed me love by sending me cards of encouragement and cards of support when I lost my grandpa, my grandma two years ago. Uh, my food pantry friends, when I think of generosity, I think of you, Miss Bonnie, um, Mr. Pitt, um, Otis, Miss Jewel, 
Miss Valerie, Ronnie, Miss Peggy, Miss Latanya, Miss Lisa, Miss Linda, and our faithful leader, Miss Sharon McManus, wherever you are. You showed me through your service what it looks like to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. I love getting to serve God's people with you. Then when I was, when I was in school, while also being at St. Paul, I learned what it looks like to stand up for justice, to, look, to learn what it looks like to stand up for the hurting and the oppressed in, a black, in the black and brown community. I grew up in a mostly white church, so St. Paul was a bit of a culture shock for me. Um, in fact, I had Josh Jordan, Jonathan Sherman, and Keontae Easter to be my brothers and to be my translators as I made that change over to this beautiful culture. <laughs> I still don't think I know all the songs that we sing and worship here, but I've loved each one of them, and I have loved this time. But seriously, I wouldn't trade my experience for anything here at the end. For I wouldn't trade my experience here for anything in the world. It was revealed to me here that our God is a God of justice, and that standing up for justice isn't political. It's a part of God's gospel. Standing up for the George, uh, the George Floyd's, the Ahmaud Arbery's, the Breonna Taylors of this world is a must. Jesus came for the broken. He came for the hurting, and he came to set the oppressed free. Church family, know that you have a brother and an advocate in me going forward. So St. Paul, thank you. Thank you for accepting me for who I am and for loving me and my family with a Christ-like love. My, my dad, he's, he's already made it clear to me that if St. Paul ever starts up the before service breakfast again, that he wants to be back and to have that catfish that he said was so good. <laughs> lastly, lastly, to the kids, I say this. If you don't learn anything else from me, and my time here, then remember this. You are God's masterpiece. The Bible makes that clear. Ephesians 2.10. God loves you so very much, no matter what. When you accept and receive him into your life, he will love you forever. He is your heavenly father, and you are his children. Nothing else matters. Now what the world says about you, not what bullies say about you, not social media, not even what you might have to say about yourself. You belong to the God of the universe. Yes. Let your identity rest in him and everything else will be made clear in a world that is so crazy and chaotic. Stand firm in knowing a masterpiece is who you are and God's is who you are and that your former youth pastor is gonna be working on understanding more of that himself too. With that, I want to bring this letter to a close. Thank you for listening to all of this. I'll forever miss the banter with the church staff, being a part of a family that works here in the office and that loves each other. I'll miss the mic checks and having fun with the band and the choir and service. I'll miss the impact worships and the awesome volunteers that I had the pleasure to work with and the students that I had the awesome opportunity to engage with. I'll miss midweek Bible studies with the group of middle and high school students that faithfully came. And I'll miss teaching uh, the teenage Sunday morning live class with Miss Tanya and some of the wonderful teenagers that showed up. St. Paul family, kids, I will miss you all. Know that I love you deeply, but I'm thankful that this will not be a forever goodbye. I think I'm friends with like the whole church on Facebook. So <laughs> let's continue to keep up with each other as I keep up with you. I plan on keeping tabs on our students as well. So don't slack off. I will be watching always. Taylor and I will be staying in Charlotte and we don't plan on leaving anytime soon. In the meantime, I ask that you pray for me and for our family as we look to see what God has in store for us next in this season of life. I'll be praying for you as you look to find a new children and youth pastor and that they would come in with a love so deep for the students here to help them know and love Jesus more. In Christ's love, as coined by Pastor Greg Moss, your forever brown-eyed soul brother. Thank you. I love you guys. <laughs>
I knew Cheris, but where Cheris at? Oh, she up, yeah. Go ahead, y'all. Stand up. Um, and I know I'm going to get fussed out on my Thursday call, but I'm just going to let folks love on them. Y'all, y'all them, yeah. Just keep your mask on. Just keep your mask on. Um, Peyton and Taylor, um, you may not work here. I told him, though, that as long as you want, we're your church family. Um, however the Lord I, 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 I want to um, before, before we, we close I, I want to commend Peyton on his bravery and his courage and, and I wanted him not me to, to share this because I didn't fire him. You know how your cousin be making up stuff. Um, he reached this decision. He had agency. Um, I was in constant communication with my leadership about what was going on with him um, to the extent that I felt that they needed to know, but I knew all the intricacies. And um, um, he ain't lying. I was looking for him to roll with me at least for another three or four years because one day, and especially if the Lord, you know, allows for his uh, psyche to be recalibrated, he's going to make somebody a heck of a pastor. He, first of all, he has the heart, the spirit. And, 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 and let me say, and that's why I hired, when I first met him, I told Deborah and Gwen, when I first met him, I was going to like, yeah, this, this, this is it. And it wasn't about color, because I didn't need nobody that was trying to hold a position waiting to try to get a church. I need somebody that was going to serve my kids. And he has done a wonderful job. So, I'm going to let y'all love on them after church. Just keep your mask on. All right? Is that all right? Okay. Let's close out. God, we don't deserve it, but we're going to take it. For Peyton and for Taylor, give them what they need to move through this moment. And let them know that they have a church family here at St. Paul that will pray for them and give them what they need to navigate this moment. Thank you, God, for the gifts you have sent our way. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of the glory with all exceeding joy to the only wise God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. I'm going if you want to come down, Peyton, you can come down. Um, let folks speak to you and and um, um, and those that not, you can make your way out quickly. I didn't know if Jackson State.